Dialogue, the thing you're technically listening to right now, he said. This week we are continuing on our show don't tell theme this week. Well, that was poorly written. Specifically looking at how this oft dispensed piece of writing advice applies to writing dialogue. Last week we talked about descriptions and how show v tell applies to that. And next week I forget what we're supposed to talk about. Dialogue on its face is already a means of showing rather than telling. By taking information out of narrative and moving it into dialogue, you are technically moving closer to showing rather than telling. By its very nature, dialogue is less abstract than pure narrative, because it automatically turns a scene from an expository focus to an action focus. We are seeing events and watching the characters react to them, the reaction comes in the form of the actual words they speak, rather than just being told what happens. Getting expository information across through dialogue is better than passing it through narrative, but you still need to be careful with how you do it. Info dumping through dialogue is not much better than doing it through narrative. In fact, it might be worse because now you're damaging your characters by turning them into crutches to get over your own expository difficulties. Dialogue should serve to characterize and convey motivations. It should stimulate action that drives the plot, not just serve as a way to dump exposition. You can definitely write a very telly and non-engaging dialogue scene, which is why this video exists. So with that, here are some tips for writing dialogue in a way that shows rather than tells. Tip number one, make sure your dialogue involves more than one character. I mean, obviously, otherwise it's technically a monologue, but what I mean here is make sure that it's an actual conversation between two or more characters. One of the easiest ways to veer a dialogue scene into telling territory is when one character is doing most of the speaking. This usually involves dumping a lot of exposition and all the other characters just standing there nodding their heads or worse, not saying anything at all. This is one of those situations where moving exposition from narrative to dialogue doesn't accomplish very much because as far as the reader is concerned, nothing has really changed. They are still reading through the same boring info dump with partially glazed eyes, only now it's surrounded by quotes and they probably imagine it being said in whatever accent the character is speaking in. A much better way to handle this is to have other characters involved in the conversation. They should ask questions, add their own opinions, dispute what the other characters are saying, anything that will add a bit of interest and action to the scene. Another closely related problem to this is what's known as maid and butler dialogue. This also is a trope called As You Know. Basically, this kind of dialogue happens when you have two characters discussing something or relating facts to which they are both already aware, in order to relate this information to the audience. They sometimes allude to the fact that they both know about what they're talking about by beginning the dialogue with, as you know, that's where the trope name comes from, as you know. This type of dialogue basically causes the same problem I mentioned before, except with two characters instead of one. Rather than taking a passage of exposition and dumping it into one character's dialogue, you've split it into two or more characters and made a conversation out of it. While that's arguably a step up from the alternative, it's still not a recipe for engaging writing. This is again because you're sacrificing characterization for the sake of getting information across to the reader, rather than letting the motivations, goals, and emotions of the characters drive the dialogue. Speaking of... Tip number two, let the motivations, goals, and emotions of the characters drive the dialogue. This tip is less about directly doing more showing rather than telling, and more about changing the focus of how you write dialogue. The two kinds of bad dialogue scenes I've talked about thus far, the character reading an encyclopedia entry aloud and maid and butler dialogue, are both written with a focus on getting information across to the reader. Instead, if you allow the motivations of the characters to drive what they say in a given scene, you will naturally have less telly dialogue. Their motivations will 
motivate them to ask specific questions, to try and get more information, or to argue for a specific viewpoint, all the while providing the reader with the expository information they need. Even though technically nothing has changed, you are still having one character relate facts to another character through dialogue, the reader is going to find this more engaging. This is because if you properly establish both the sympathetic nature and motivations of the character seeking this information, then the reader is also naturally going to want to get the same information that the character is seeking. Your characters should be emotionally invested in the things they say. They should say these things because they want to say them, not because it reveals a piece of information that you really need to tell the audience. Of course, you need to be careful with how you clue the reader in on this emotion. Tip number three, let your dialogue show the emotions and feelings of the characters, rather than just telling it to the reader. You've probably been told a couple of things about dialogue tags. First, that you should use said and asked most of the time in lieu of more flowery alternatives. And second, that you should avoid adding adverbs to your dialogue tags words that attempt to describe how a given line of dialogue was spoken. There are a lot of reasons that these two pieces of advice are usually worth following, but the most relevant one for today is that in avoiding these two things, you are also doing more showing and less telling. A flowery dialogue tag or an equally flowery adverb appended to a dialogue tag are both ways of telling the reader about the dialogue giving extra context about the dialogue that the dialogue itself does not provide. It is much, much more effective, however, if the dialogue itself provides this context. How you do this gets complicated, but it basically comes down to word choice, use of punctuation like em dashes and ellipses, and knowing how to structure the beats and introspection around the dialogue to achieve the kind of feeling that you want. Having action beats between your dialogue is a good way to handle this. By having a character pound their fists on a table or spit out their coffee or do their happy dance, you can better show the emotional response to the dialogue and imply about the tone of the dialogue. The pacing and structure of the dialogue sections also matters. Short, tag-free sections of dialogue are going to read much differently than slower sections with a lot of beats and introspection in between the dialogue parts. When done correctly, the structure of a dialogue section goes a long way to implying a lot about the emotion of that dialogue section, and avoids you having to use adverbs or flowery dialogue tags. But things like structure and beats can only go so far. Ultimately, you should focus on the actual dialogue you're writing rather than the stuff that comes around it. Ideally, the dialogue on its own should convey the emotional state of the character, whether they are sad or angry or happy. Just like you're probably angry that this video is over. Or you might possibly be sad. Or you might be happy, I don't know. I hope you enjoyed this video and found the advice in it useful. If you want to see more stuff like this, you can check out all my other writing advice related videos or stick around until next week when we talk about show, don't tell, and exposition, I think. Can't really remember. Come back next week and find out. You can also subscribe to my channel. I upload new writing advice videos every Wednesday. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.